We're facing the biggest rail strike in more than 30 years on the 21st, 23rd and 25th of this month, June. Uh, we're joined by the General Secretary now of the union response, or the RMT, and that's Mick Lynch. He was on the show a couple of weeks ago saying he was hoping to avoid this, but it looks like it's going to happen. Mr Lynch, I'm just going to cut straight to a question from, from one of our viewers, because it typifies much of the reaction we're getting this morning. This is somebody called Ragnar. He says, the RMT's plan is to cause misery. My son is a cancer surgeon in London. He won't be able to get in. They're now replanning and they'll be cancelling many operations. And then he says, with bitter irony, well done, RMT Union. I bet you're proud of yourselves. Well, he's watching right now. What would you say to him? Well, we don't want to cause misery for anyone. We've got a cost of living crisis, which you've just been discussing. And our members are a part of that. They've been working through the pandemic. They've been keeping the uh, transport services and the rail services going. They were lauded as heroes by Grant Shapps, their transport minister, during that period. And their reward for that has been a pay freeze that's gone on for two or three years. We've got into the third anniversary without a pay increase for most of our members. We're faced with thousands of job cuts. And our terms and conditions are going to be ripped up in a form of fire and rehire that's done internally to the railway. So we completely regret the disruption. I understand the anger that the public will feel. I understand their concern at the disruption. But I also understand the anger of our members and of working people in general yes, but about see, the way they're being ripped off by okay. their employers and ripped off by the government. OK, well, that, 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 that's your answer to him and to many people who've made similar points. I suppose what they're all really saying is, or asking is, does the means justify the end? You, of course, have an absolute right to strike and you have an absolute right to push hard for better pay and conditions and safety and all the rest of it, but you're actually holding the public to hostage. You're not really actually affecting your bosses, you're affecting ordinary men and women who won't be able to get to work, who won't be able to go on holiday. Also, uh, there are so many events happening in that week and I, I suspect that's why you've picked that week. Um, there's Glastonbury, there's a huge Elton John concert, many other things, all of which are going to be severely disrupted and people's pleasure and enjoyment and functionality are going to be hit. You're basically holding the public to hostage. That's, that's what's coming through. We're not holding anyone to hostage. I don't follow Elton John's tour schedule or, or, the, or the, the comings and goings of Glastonbury. What we're faced with is the lack of a pay rise and the threat of compulsory redundancies across our industry. We're also facing the threat of cuts to the safety standards because Network Rail are changing the safety mm. regime to cut uh, inspections to make sure that they can cut 3,000 of our members' jobs who do those safety inspections every day and every night on the railway. Now, what you're asking us to do is just to accept passively the destruction of our industry and the loss of jobs mm. and the poverty of our members. What's happening in this country I don't think is the transfer what people are of wealth asking. between Sorry, with respect, working people Lynch, and the rich. I, I think a lot of people have enormous sympathy with what you're saying and what your members are experiencing. Mm. But I think people would say, don't accept it passively, but please don't cause the misery that you're going to cause. I mean, Richard's already mentioned a huge number of events. Now, you know, you might say, well, I don't follow tour dates and... But th these are businesses. You know, these are huge events affecting thousands of people and businesses which are going to be put out. We've already talked about, um, you know, other things that are going to be affected, particularly hospitals, NHS, people going for important appointments. That week is also the final week of GCSE and A-level exams. You're going to stop pupils getting into schools, you're going to stop teachers getting into schools. You say you don't want to cause misery, you are causing misery. Is there not another way that doesn't involve going on strike? Well, I would love to find another way. We've been speaking well, to these... negotiation. Well, I know what negotiation is, Susanna, and I do it every day of the week, and I'll be doing it in this dispute, and we'll be seeking a settlement that our members can accept. We have been talking to these companies for two years about their programme. They have not put forward a single proposal that addresses the issues uh, in this dispute. You are asking us to be passive in the face of aggression from our employers. They are seeking thousands of job cuts. And they, they and you seem to want us to just passively accept that. Where workers have done that over the last 20 or 30 years, they have been driven into minimum wage, they've been driven 
into having their conditions cut. They've been driven into the gig economy, insecure employment, flexible working hours, as it's called, yeah. zero hours contracts. Well, you're wrong it's to time say, you're now wrong for to workers say... to stand up for themselves yes, and, and get a square deal from and... this company, these companies yep. and from society in general. Well, I did, open, I did open up my question by saying that obviously you have every right to strike um, and, and, and every worker has the right to strike. I'm just wondering if there isn't... But you just a don't I'm want just, us to exercise it ever. I'm just, I'm just no, I don't want... We have the right, no, 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 I, feel feel that you, I don't want misery for, for yeah. all the people who are going to suffer. Well, and I don't I want to my members to lose their wages. To put to you, what I wanted to put to you is this. Is there not a middle way? Rather than as... We accept your right to take industrial action, but can't you mitigate it a bit? What about a go slow? Why does it have to be a complete walkout? Why, not take, why not take more moderate measures to make your point? Well, go slows are illegal. Uh, the anti-trade union laws in this country make everything except overtime bans and uh, strike action almost impossible to carry out. A go slow would cause as much disruption uh, us opening the gates for passengers to travel for free so that the companies didn't get revenue has been made illegal by continuous Tory governments. Then why a three-day strike? Why not a one-day strike? I'm just trying to look at ways that you can mitigate the misery that you've already admitted you're going to cause. And it's real. We're not making it up. It's going to be horrible. Because why, why does a one it have to be a three-day strike? Not, why can't it be not, a one-day strike? A one-day strike would not cause... Uh, the government and the companies to sit up and pay attention to our demands. And it would also make this go on for longer, possibly, all the way through the summer. We have to get the government to allow these companies to make proper offers. It's Rishi Sunak and Grant Shapps and Boris Johnson that are tying the hands of these employers so that they cannot make proper offers. They are enforcing austerity across the working class. And we're faced with enforced poverty mm -hmm. of many thousands, if not millions, of working people across this economy. And it's time now that the British worker got a pay rise and got yeah. job security and decent conditions yep. from corporate Britain, uh, look, who are ripping them I, off and I have think billions that has, of pounds that in profits. That argument has an, you know, enormous support. That is not the argument, though, is it? It's the misery that is caused. And you've already said that you're holding a three-day strike in order to inflict the most pressure. Well, I didn't say um, that at all. We're, what we're seeking to is have effective industrial action. You just said that a one-day strike wouldn't, wouldn't... But there's no point in having ineffective industrial action, is there, Susanna? It, wouldn't be, it would be pointless. OK, but, Pe but the other... People look to a strong trade union yeah. to effectively represent them at yes. the negotiating table. Yeah. We will seek to do that, and if we can get a decent offer from these companies that addresses the issue, we will settle okay. this dispute. The other but thing we've had you're no doing, offers. Lynch, is you're holding the strikes on alternate days, so it isn't just a three-day strike, is it? It's, it's no, basically a week, week of yeah. misery. Well, we are holding effective industrial action. That is the job of the trade union, to make sure that they apply the pressure in an effective way. That's what we need to do mm -hmm. to make the companies and the government pay attention to our demands. Do you think there is a chance that because the threat is, you know, as tough as you're clearly outlining, that, you know, the point of it should be that it brings the employers back to the negotiating table in order that, they, that you call it off? Is that possible? It's possible. We have waited two weeks since the ballot result to allow negotiations and discussions to happen. I've been at those negotiations myself. There has not been a single offer or even a mention of a concrete offer to address these issues. There's been a two-year lead-up to this and we've still got a further two weeks before any action takes place. So we need to get round the table and have serious proposals that address the issues. All right. Mick Lynch, thanks very Thank much. Thank you, Mr Lynch. Indeed.